Hello everyone, welcome to this session on slope stability analysis using minor soil works. In the last session, we discussed about the usage of minor civil for box culvert and RC slab bridges and understood that checking the stability of slopes near the structure is as important as designing the structure itself. To deal with any sort of slope stability problems, Midas provides GTS NX and SoilWorks. GTS NX is a 2D and 3D FEA software, whereas SoilWorks is 2D only with analytical methods supported along with finite element analysis methods. One such analytical method most commonly used for slope stability analysis is limit equilibrium method, which is the topic of our today's discussion. This is how I am going to proceed. Firstly, I'll give a product overview, then I'll discuss the strengths of Midas SoilWorks, then applications of MIDA SOILWORKS will be discussed. Next, limit equilibrium method, its theoretical background and application in the software will be discussed in detail and it will be followed with a software demonstration on limit equilibrium method for slope stability analysis. Let me give you a product overview. MIDAS SOILWORKS is all-in-one 2D FEA and analytical software for structural and geotechnical engineers. It has seven modules. First is slope module for slope stability analysis using strength reduction method, stress analysis method or limit equilibrium method. Other is rock module which is a module for failure modes slope stability and various other analysis on rocks. Third is foundation module for PY analysis for various configurations of piles. Fourth is dynamic module which is for seismic analysis with a huge database for time history records of major earthquakes. Fifth is seepage module which is to analyze the effects of seepage. It's mainly for dams and levees, but can be used in other cases also to determine the pore water pressure. SoilWorks sixth module is soft ground module, which is for immediate settlements in sandy soils or consolidation settlement in clay soils over long period. Last is ground module, which is mainly for tunnel analysis but can be used for analyzing the effects of cutting and filling. If you see the workflow of any finite element analysis software, it would be as shown on your screen. First is we have to model the geometry. Next, we have to define the properties, mesh the structure, define the loads, define the boundary conditions, then run the analysis and then check the post-processing results. GUI of Midas SoilWorks is so user friendly that to follow this workflow, you just have to move from left to right for modeling and obtaining the results. So the entire operation becomes very intuitive. SoilWorks is reliable for accurate results. And we can say this because of our numerous project applications and verification examples. SoilWorks has seven smart features and I'll discuss these in detail in the next slide. First is smart modeling which is CAD based operating environment. In Midas SoilWorks we can import any CAD geometry and perform the modeling on it or it has CAD based options using which we can edit the model. Next smart feature is smart surface which creates a surface quite quickly within few seconds. Third is smart mesh for which 
no element size input is required. So anyone without in-depth finite element modeling knowledge can also use SOILWORKS and the software defines the mesh best suited to get accurate results. Minus SOILWORKS provides smart support using which we can generate boundary conditions automatically. We'll see all these smart features in the demonstration. Fifth is smart technical review using which we can check the definitions and prevent errors in the analysis. Sixth is smart analysis in which we need just one file for all the analysis cases to be analyzed simultaneously. SOILWORKS also provides coupled analysis. Coupled analysis is the case like we can perform seepage analysis and get the results of pore water pressure and use it as a pressure inside the soil for slope stability analysis. So this kind of coupling is provided in where several modules of SOILWORKS. The last smart feature is smart results where we can extract high quality report within few minutes. Some of the major project applications of SOILWORKS are mentioned here. Soft ground module, using this we can obtain primary and secondary consolidation settlement results. Parametric analysis can be performed for various drainage types and spacings. 1D consolidation analysis can be performed. Next is ground module with tunnel. Using this module, we can perform tunnel lining design, effects on neighboring structures due to tunnel excavation. Construction stage analysis can be performed. The next is slope module in which multiple arc failure surface can be reflected for slope stability analysis. And various Practical reinforcement materials are supported in soil works which can be used for stabilizing the slopes. Both dry and rainy season conditions can be considered. Finite element method along with analytical solutions are available in soil works slope module. There is foundation module as well in which single pile as well as group pile behavior can be simulated file layout optimization can be performed and horizontal stability check by PY curve extraction can be performed in Midas solids. Now let's discuss limit equilibrium method. On your screen you can see a summary of limit equilibrium method. It is a method of slices in which the failure surface is divided into numerous number of slices and equilibrium of forces and moments is checked for the slope stability calculation. Input data for the ground layers is cohesion and friction angle. Boundaries defined in soil works are arc, polygon, auto search. Arc is actually shown on the bottom left corner. In this, users specify the nodes or we can say centers using which various failure circles will be drawn and factor of safety for every circle will be calculated. The other option is using polygon in which the users can specify a polygon itself onto which the factor of safety will be calculated. Third option is auto search in which we can automatically search for most critical failure surface and we don't need to define the centers or the polygon. There are other boundaries like cut failure surface, arc passing limit. These are only used to limit the number of circles or the polygon generated in minus soil works. Soil works also supports tension crack. Tension crack, considering tension crack, what the software does is the slices having tensile normal force are ignored for factor of safety calculation. As you can see in the image on bottom right, this is the location of tension crack highlighted in the blue rectangular box. 
Beyond the tension crack, the slices are not considered for factor of safety calculation. That is more accurate FOS calculation. The loads which can be defined in soil works are line load and static seismic acceleration load. Analysis results available in soil works are factor of safety and the most critical failure section. Advantages of using limit equilibrium method is that it's a simple theory with numerous successful construction cases. So we could say that limit equilibrium method is quite reliable when it comes to slope stability analysis. Cons about limit equilibrium method is no strain and displacement compatibility, no displacement and stress output. All these cons can be overcome by using finite element modeling which is also supported in modern soil works. But in today's session, we'll only be discussing limited equilibrium method. Now I would give you some information about coupled analysis in modern soil works. There are two kinds of coupled analysis supported by slope module in soil works. First is seepage slope. In seepage slope, firstly what we do is we perform the seepage analysis of the ground like this shown in the top uh, image. In this seepage analysis, the effect of rainfall intensity and duration is considered. Using that, we obtain the pore water pressure. These results are sent to limit equilibrium method model, which is used in the slope module. And then we perform the factor of safety calculation considering the pore water pressure results. The other coupling is soft ground and slope where we can check critical height of embankment over soft ground, take account of strength increase of soft ground, check critical height for each construction stage. So to get all this what we need to do is perform the construction stage analysis with single stage in in soft ground module, get the stiffness of all these soil layers from single stage analysis. This model can be sent to slope module and then variable height of embankments can be defined in slope module and minimum factor of safety is calculated. Based on that, this single layer of embankment can be further divided into two parts at this particular height. After dividing the model into two, further construction stage analysis will be performed and this will give slightly increased strength of soft ground which can be further considered for limited ground method analysis. So this is how iterative process works and we get on these results. Here we'll discuss Simplified and analysis, advanced analysis methods supported in soil works. Simplified ones are Felinius, Bishop, Janbu. Most commonly used ones are Bishop and Janbu and are quite old. Bishop has a disadvantage that it doesn't consider horizontal equilibrium. Whereas Janbu doesn't consider moment equilibrium. These are the drawbacks of these older methods. Advanced analysis methods like Spencer, MNP, Sarma, all three of them can consider all sorts of equilibrium and give much more accurate results compared to Bishop and Chambu. Let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of these simplified and advanced analysis methods. Bishop method and Janbu method which are the simplified analysis methods take shorter analysis time but the result for Bishop method is inaccurate when horizontal force is acting and for Janbu method the results are too much conservative. With advanced analysis methods like Spencer, MNP or Sarma, the analysis time is quite longer but the factor of safety calculation is more accurate and is well supported in modest soil works. After we check the factor of safety, 
if the slope comes out to be unsafe, we can use reinforcements like anchors, nails or all these which are well supported in soil works. In today's demonstration, I will be using nails which are most widely used reinforcement and they do not require any pre-stressing. Along with that, they have axial as well as shear resistance. Piles are shown in nail, sorry, nails are shown in this image, the bottom right. And these are the piles which are simulated. Now I'll go to the demonstration. During this demonstration, we'll see the application of seven smart features for using limit equilibrium method for the slope shown on the left this slope. In the results, we will see the factor of safety, critical failure arc and detailed data for slices. With this, I will move to this demonstration. This is how the start page of Midas SoilWorks looks like. I'll click on slope module since I'm going to use it. And then I can choose the units SI, CGS, FPS or user defined units and then click OK. To model the geometry, we have several options like there are CAD based features. I can use this for model the geometry or I can directly go to import CAD file and import the DWG file directly. So you see within seconds the entire geometry has been imported in soil worlds and now this is what smart modeling is about. So within few seconds the model is quite easily generated. Next I have to define ground material and structural properties. I can go to limit equilibrium method tab, click on ground material property. I can choose limit equilibrium method more column and input the parameters, input a name and add the material or else I can go to database where we have a huge database from which I can choose the material, select the material which I want to define select the model type as more column LEM and click assign. For now I am not defining from here. Likewise structure property can be defined. Element types supported in soil works are shown here. What I will do is I will go to import, import database from other file which I have already saved. So we can use the previously saved files for importing the material and section database. I click on import data and you can see ground material property and structure properties are imported. Now to assign these properties, I'll just select the piles to which I have to assign the structure property. To assign the property, I can just drag and drop. So the structure property is assigned and now I'll show you the second smart feature that is smart surface. I'll click on this and within seconds smart surface generates surface along all the lines. So after I have generated the surface I can assign the ground material properties. All I need to do is select the ground material and drag and drop it. I'll select the second ground layer, select the ground material, drag and drop. Third layer selected and drag and drop. So very quickly, my structure property has been defined, assigned, my ground materials have been defined and assigned. After this, I can go to model and click on object information. If I have to check anything, we can check node, curve, point, surface, anything. This is kind of query. So if you want to inquire something or some changes are required, 
anything change in the model is needed so it can be done even at this stage so that's the advantage with this software and now I'll show you smart mesh in smart mesh we don't need to enter the size of mesh anywhere we can just choose very fine mesh with triangular elements and software will automatically generate a suitable mesh for accurate results and then I can click on smart support boundaries and smart support so just click OK and the support is generated so it's that quick but these two smart features smart mesh and smart boundary are not needed for limit equilibrium method so I'll just undo those steps and I'm back to the stage where I assign the ground material properties to the ground layers. Now I'll go to limit equilibrium method tab. I'll define a line load. I'll define distributed load. Select a curve and enter a value of minus 30 kN meter. And click OK. After defining the line load I will go to arc failure surface. I will name it as arc left. Grid spacing will be 2 meters. I have to draw a grid for calculation of factor of safety. So I just minimize the model and define a grid. Let's say I'm choosing quite a big grid so that my failure circles reference nodes do not lie outside this rectangle. I'm trying to capture maximum possible areas for the failure circle. We have two methods to define the failure arc. One is using tangent method, other is specifying the radius values. I'll choose the radius option. Now I'll choose a passage point, the first failure circle which passed through this point. Arc radius increment, various arcs will be constructed increasing the radius by 1 meter. Number of arcs for every center will be 10 and click apply. Now I'll define the second arc that is arc right. I'll define the grid range here. In this, I'll use arc tangent lines. So I have to define a tangent. I'll just zoom it. Define a tangent line here. Number of tangents. Let's say I define five tangents. So what the software will do is, for every center, it will make arcs, which will be tangent to the lines that I have defined. And now I can click OK. So two arcs. Actually, the boundary conditions for limit equilibrium method have been defined. And after this, I can go to analysis or design tab. Design option, I choose cut slope, specifying that my model is a cut slope. The factor of safety for dry condition is 1.5. For wet, it's 1.2 that I have chosen here. So if the factor of safety in this model file is less than 1.5, then the slope will be unsafe since I am analyzing it for dry condition. Now I go to analysis case. I define the first analysis case. Left slope without reinforcement. I choose analysis method as limit equilibrium method. Analysis control data. I can choose any of the analysis methods. I choose Bishop, left to right failure click OK. All layer sets, all boundary, all load. I'll just drag and drop reinforcement to deactivate it. Drag and drop arc right to deactivate the right failure circle arc and just click apply. Next load case I'll generate with reinforcement. So I'll just drag and drop reinforcement again. So it's activated. Click apply. And the last load case is 
right slope with reinforcement reinforcement doesn't matter for right slope because reinforcement is not at all defined for right slope i can choose right to left failure direction that's the only change that i need and here i can choose right boundary condition then click ok after defining everything i'll show you the fifth smart feature that is tools check so just before running the analysis i can have this review this will show me all the input definitions that i have made and if i am good to perform the analysis now or not analysis can now be performed for all the three cases so i'll just go to analysis tab click on analysis and report and click perform analysis i'll save this model as say example and run the analysis this is the smart analysis feature of soilworks that all the load cases are analyzed simultaneously i do not need a separate model file for a model without reinforcement and the model for with reinforcement and another model for right slope i am analyzing all the three cases simultaneously not only that along with that i am generating a detailed design report which we will see after checking the results and we can find how helpful it is for summarizing the results now the report generation is starting it will take few minutes for the report to be generated The slope stability analysis report has been generated. Now I can close it and now check the results. The factor of safety without reinforcement is 1.3398. I can see all the failure circles just by clicking at this. The factor of safety with reinforcement is increased to 2.3316, which is as expected. So 1.33 is less than 1.5 so there was a requirement of reinforcement and reinforcement stabilizes the slope for the right slope the factor of safety is 1.6281 which is greater than 1.5 so no reinforcement definition is required we can check the slice force details by just by double clicking at the slice and this is the detail of the slices and the forces in the slices can be seen here I can just keep on changing the slice. You see, this is the slice which is highlighted, and the forces are displayed here. After looking at this, I'll show you the report. This is the design report which is generated. Firstly, this is the design parameter which I defined for dry season the factor of safety should be greater than 1.5 this is the material input with cohesion and friction angle with saturated and unsaturated weight density this is the structural property definition and then this is the result without reinforcement the check is not good with reinforcement the factor of safety is sufficient and for the right slope the factor of safety is okay and there is no need of any kind of stabilization this completes the presentation of mine i'll move back to the presentation now and i'd like to end the session